So okay, introduce go. yourself and what do you do with this great car? Yeah, Damola, I'm Pam Fletcher. I'm the executive chief engineer for electrified vehicles at General Motors. Wow, so you're not only working on the ELR, you work on the Volt, you work on the Spark. Mm -hmm. So you are the executive chief engineer for all of this new propulsion, whether it's the extended range or the pure electrics. Exactly. Talk about your role. So kind of give us an insight into your role. Right, and so in this role, the, the idea would be that we're always obviously looking forward as to, you know, what are the right, great products to make available for our customers. We're also looking at uh, putting technologies, making great use of our wonderful technologies, such as our extended range electric vehicles, and providing that uh, in forms that more and more customers can enjoy. So are you also involved in the hybrid too, as far as the ESS and also the hybrid technologies? Too? Right. I need to look across all of our tech, all of our electrification strategies, make sure we have the right strategies for the customer, that we're putting the right technologies in the right vehicles and get them into the marketplace in a, um, in a quality and exciting way. So in, the, in, that, in, that, in that vein, speak about what you see in the field because in the onset, when you guys launched the Volt, now I remember looking at the Volt project from when it was just a design study with GE, oh, mm -hmm. and you guys had students coming in and the original sketches years That's a ago. a long time ago. Yes, so I've been following, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been trailing your work. Yeah, very good. <laughs> you know, and seeing that, and, and, and the discussion was like, well, we're not sure, but now when you look at a wide range of vehicles, electrification has found its way to hyper supercars like mm -hmm. the La Ferrari to the P1, Claren to the P18, I mean to the P9, I mean to the 918 Porsche to cars here to the entry level Spark, which to me is a game changer because now when you bring in electrification to a car, you compromise at zero cargo room because you're able to put it up behind the rear wheels, like right by, right by the rear wheels. You're now able to get a car that's an entry-level price for people that are younger to be able to experience electrification. I couldn't have said it better myself. You exactly hit the mark. And the only thing I, additionally I would encourage you on is you've got to drive the Spark EV. It is a blast to drive. It's fun, it's nimble, the acceleration is super quick, and I think people are really going to enjoy that car for all the reasons you said. The yes. uncompromised cargo, the uncompromised passenger space, a great price point, and on top of it all, fun to drive. Yes, and then actually when you're speaking about that, with the millennials, and there was this uh, article about millennials want products that are doing good for the environment, where, where there's a different value set. So speak about that, and even with bringing this to the luxury market, because it seems like the, the startup manufacturers have had a foray into electrification, bringing in a sedan, bringing in something with more value, but speak about the expertise GM will bring, having sold almost 100,000 volts around the world now, and bringing that technology, improving it with the CLR. Yeah, so what I, what I would say is we have, um, you know, we've had the Volt in the field now for over two years, almost two and a half years. And so on our extended range electric vehicle technology, we've gotten some great feedback from real world customers, you know, not, not based on our engineering assumptions up front, but real world, world customers are driving the Volt almost like an EV. Over 82% of these real world customers are driving all electric all the time. They're going over 900 miles on average between Phillips. So think about that. I mean, their cost of transportation, their cost of gasoline has gone down uh, tremendously. And while I don't think at this time there's one technology solution that meets everyone's need, I will say that uh, extended range electrical, electric vehicle technology, I think, is a, um, a very uncompromising a technology that works for most anyone because with the car's ability to drive full electric performance and we know most of our customers are driving that way all the time plus the onboard generator that can take you not only your daily commute of course but it can take you you know your weekend beach trip your vacation uh, driving coast to coast so it can be your only car and on top of that, you know, that daily commute being emissions and gasoline free just feels uh, like we're doing the right thing. When I look at this car here, 
Um, and uh, obviously, this is a portfolio. Obviously, as, as you in your position, executive, you're looking at okay, where would this slip? Where would the customers be? If Tesla says they can sell twenty thousand, and that's a startup. Fisker did 2,500, and a lot of the technology is similar. I mean, they use your equal tech engine, right? So they did some sourcing from you. I see that a car here, where it's Cadillac and the price point, if you have a full high 30s, maybe this might be 15, 20K premium, where it's now lower than the startups, but then you have better dealer rollout, you already have economies of scale, you have the manufacturing process worked out, which is a lot of some of the difficulties they've come upon, which is very hard to do the componentry. So I could see something like this bringing in 10, 15,000 new customers to the Cadillac brand, fitting in a portfolio that you have an ATS, you have an XTS that brings different customers, you have the new CTS, you have the SRX, you have a new Escalade, and then now you're bringing people that want eco-friendly luxury, and then this fits here. And it might be 15, 20,000 customers that now could pick an American luxury car like Cadillac, and that brings more customers in. So how do you see this fit? I mean, that's my assumption, but how do you see this product fitting in the Cadillac portfolio and how that allows people to get a different experience. Because a typical Cadillac customer might not have thought of electrification as a solution, but by bringing something like this that's gorgeous into the showroom, it kind of gives them a chance to experience the value of, the, of electrification and the fuel efficiency too. In reality, I think that this almost makes the perfect Cadillac because the blend of what the alternative propulsion can bring to the car fits right into Cadillac's art and science. Because, think about what that um, electric propulsion provides you. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's um, instantaneous torque. So it plays right into the driving experience that a Cadillac customer wants, alternative propulsion or not. So I think it's the perfect marriage of technology with the brand to help accentuate what the brand stands for. And I think even with the Q, it's perfect for this car because now engineers, especially with the Q being a system that's based on mobile architecture as far as the ARM processor, and then you have GM doing apps. So engineers and, 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 and computer science majors and electrical computer engineering majors could really tinker and bring more value on a, a, an enhanced experience because of what GM is doing as far as when you talk about the art and science. So, I mean, I think that is such, in my, in our view, we feel like this is a game-changing vehicle that would disrupt, I feel it, it has the potential to disrupt the luxury market, especially when you're dealing with a marketplace where volumes are all, already lower. So this is something that is different, and then also GM's backing and saying, wow, you know that the company's here, warranties, customer service, GM Good Ranch, all these things that you've expected, and here it comes in this package. Exactly. Again, I do think it's a perfect blend of where the technology enhances the brand. I think that uh, uh, it's going to draw customers that want that want the luxurious but environmentally free driving. But I think it's going to bring in a whole a whole another set of customers that are going to be unexpectedly surprised by the beauty, the luxuriousness that can be provided in such a um, smooth, quiet driving experience. So we're really excited to get it in the hands of. Um, uh, drivers. And, yes, I mean, you know, we're, <laughs> as you can see, we're really eager to get yes. our chance there. But uh, another thing I wanted to talk to, being that you cover the whole range, e -assist. So how did that come about? Because the the philosophy behind e -assist has been pretty intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. Where you're taking, you're not going full hybrid, but this electrification, this battery pack, this smaller, more compact, doesn't compromise as much of cargo room. And now you're able to put it onto the Buick LaCrosse, you're able to bring it future to an Impala, where you have full-size luxury car, I mean full-size cars, premium vehicles, that are able to get high 30s on the So how, so from your, where your step, how, how are those meetings roll out? And I mean, how did that roll out? Because obviously, you're not putting a turbo four into these big cars. It's different, so we're, we would love to get your insight as to how 
those yeah, decisions can to be. <laughs> well, e-assist is a great technology. It addresses many issues. You know, number one, it's uh, targeted toward uh, sedans, luxurious sedans, where people don't want to give up the size, they don't want to give up the luxury, but they want the fuel economy, more of a compact vehicle. And so e-assist uh, is the perfect solution for that because it packages easily in the vehicle, it doesn't compromise the reason they want that car, and you know, it provides about 25% of fuel efficiency improvements. So with that, the average customer is saving about $1,800 or so a year on gasoline. So we just think it's a great solution uh, for the customer that wants a sedan, the luxury sedan, uncompromised with the fuel efficiency that you would typically see more in the context. Of course, and even when you'd say that they don't compromise that, it's like, when we think about it, in the 70s, when there was an energy crisis, the solution was to make the cars smaller, to reduce all the power, make the cars ugly, and people didn't like cars that came from the late 70s, early 80s. We had an energy crisis, which gets under discussed in 08, where a gallon went up to $147, $5 gas became commonplace, and the result was larger cars, better fuel efficiency, more power, more technology. And a lot of that is some of the work that you're doing in your division. So how was that transition in that period? Because obviously, oh wait, a lot of things are going on. Okay, now we have to restructure the company. Which direction are we going to go? What are we going to build? Were you were you in this role at that time? I wasn't in this role, but I've been in the electrification space for a long time. And the reality is, again, one solution isn't going to meet the very of course. customers. And it's about finding you know, what's right for the customer. And so eAssist is beautiful for so many reasons. It has a, It's a simple system, which helps us keep the cost down. It's an effective system, because we can still get about 25% of the efficiency improvement. And it lets our customer have everything they want in the sedan that they chose. They can have the uncompromised passenger space, the uncompromised cargo space. Still luxurious, still all the features functions, but they just have the added benefit of this business technology added that you know gives them that, that boost in the It's important, that's important to all of us. Of course. So now let's get into your visions in the future of the field, because as you said, there's not one solution. Some people might say, well, there is a combination of diesel hybrids that might even give you a longer range. Some people might say, well, about fuel cells. Some people are saying pure electrics. There's extended range, there's mild hybrids, there's start-stop, there is lighter weights, there's going all aluminum, there's changing, there's putting turbos in the engine. So how do you see all of these things sorting out and how does that affect you in your role as your product planning, looking at a portfolio of cars that start from 12,000 to, to almost 100 and seeing what will fit where and how your team could add value to each segment of GM because you're working with the whole team and a wide range of products that reach a wide range of consumers. So I, I would answer that on two fronts. I mean, number one, it's great when you, when you offer people things that they didn't even know they wanted. But, you know, and to me, that's what makes the range of electric vehicle technology is, right? Who would have thought that they wanted a vehicle that runs all on electricity, that the gasoline generator switches on without doing anything and takes you down the road, you know, over 300 miles, and in the case of the Volt, over 380 miles without ever having to stop. So, you know, finding those uh, those great technologies, things that people didn't even know they wanted, but changed their life and they can't imagine them living without, I think that that's one aspect of the job. The other one is, you know, you mentioned a number of different uh, technologies. In the end, though, it's all about finding the right, uh, the right proposition for the customer, and the right proposition for the customer who, you know, what performance characteristics they want, what kind of uh, efficiency, fuel efficiency they want, and at what price. And so, you know, that varies as you look across the portfolio, as you look at types of cars, and the size of, you know, of cars. And so, while while um, you know, we have a lot of really creative engineers that can come up with systems that you wouldn't even believe. In the, in the end, it has to be a proposition that comes at the right value for a customer. And so that's probably the tempering, uh, the tempering factor in 
Sarah's ideas that uh, you know, we could certainly engineer, but you got to make sure you want a customer. Yeah, so I mean, obviously then it comes when you're dealing with these technologies with batteries, it really comes down to batteries. So how do you see that evolution and what have been some of these changes? Because we've been following some of what you guys have been doing. The E-Assist actually is more efficient than the hybrid that was on the Malibu. So now the Malibu Eco is able to give you a better highway performance than the Malibu was. So talk about that development process of finding and tinkering with more efficient ways to contain the energy and then be able to redeploy it in the transportation, I mean, in these vehicles. Yeah. You know, it's all, it's a very, very integrated system. And so, um, you know, when we put the assist on the car, it has to come with um, um, all the enablers to maximize the benefit that you get out of the system. You know, on any car, we want it to be, we want it to be effective. Um, it's a very efficient way to dynamic thing. We want it to be, you know, to be mass efficient. We want it to be to have a great, Low, and that's what we wanted to get into. Yeah, exactly. Right, the rolling resistance. And so uh, on every vehicle, that, that balance is a little bit different based upon the priorities of, you know, of the car. And so you'll see us uh, work to integrate um, the assist technology across multiple cars, you know, with maybe a different balance and priority depending on the particular uh, strategies of size and size. So, and then again, in conclusion, too something that's very dear to us. So talk about your experience, women in engineering, and also in an executive role, and how you're able to foster your career working up a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I have to tell you, that's not a, a factor that comes into my, my mind. Of course. My dad uh, raised cars as a weekend warrior. I started loving cars from a very young age, so I can't imagine being in any other industry doing any other job. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade this for anything. It's exciting. Every day is exciting, and you throw in the new technology aspect of it. And, um, so what advice would you give to young girls who might have aspirations to get in this field? You know, Pursue, pursue your interests. You've got to find things to do that you love. Don't, don't let anybody tell you that uh, you know there's some avenue that's not open to you. Any avenues there, if you love it, you have a passion for it, pursue it aggressively. You know, you can travel around it. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you so much. We want to grab a few pictures.